the most troubling questions that I hear regularly, consistently, is if I go to heaven, how can I possibly be happy if I know that my loved one is not there? Well, I first of all, I want to say that heaven is dwelling in the eternal presence of God. In other words, we are stripped of all sin. We are stripped of all depravity. We are stripped of an evil conscience. We are stripped of guilt. We are brought into what is referred to as that heavenly state where God has promised to wipe away every tear from our eyes, where there is no more death, where there is no more sorrow, where there is no more pain. Now the question arises, well, we will know people in heaven. Uh, soon I will be doing an entire series on heaven. You can maybe look forward to that uh, in the weeks and months to come in which I'm going to look at the passages all the way from the first book of the Bible, Genesis, to the last book that refer to heaven. We're going to try to see exactly what do the scriptures tell us about heaven. There's a lot we don't know. Uh, for example, we don't know what is there. We don't necessarily know who is there unless God has revealed it in his word, as he did with Moses and Elijah, uh, as we know with Enoch, and as we know with uh, Jesus himself being the firstborn, from among the dead, and some of the, the people who died in Jesus' particular era who were raised from the dead after his crucifixion. Well, one of the things that I think is important for us to know is that when we are in heaven, we are stripped of anything, anything that will cause those things that he just listed, sorrow, pain, death, tears, any of those things are stripped from our minds, are stripped from our hearts. Certainly I know as a, as a father, I know my son is there. He died in 1993. Uh, I know he's there because he had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave his life to Christ. I can't imagine what some parents have to live with knowing their child went to their grave without putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That is a sorrow that we bear here on earth. That is a pain and an agony that we must bear here on earth. That is suffering in the flesh here on earth. But there comes a day when our old man will be put away, our new man will be put on. We are crucified with Christ, nevertheless we live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. And in that day, he will clothe us with what the scriptures refer to as a white robe of righteousness. We will wear him. He is that white robe of righteousness. We will bask in his eternal glory. And he will show us wondrous things that our minds cannot comprehend. And somehow or another, uh, maybe there's no other way to explain it except that God has a divine eraser. And he is able to take those terrible memories, those, those tragedies, and, and just blot them away, blot them out of our understanding or our comprehension. The Apostle Paul had a near-death experience where he tells us that he went to the third heaven. He tells us that he saw things that were so glorious that God gave him a thorn in the flesh in his side to, en to encourage him not to speak of what he saw because there's no way he could have possibly explained exactly what he saw to everyone's satisfaction because our mere minds can't comprehend that. I can't comprehend a God who has a divine eraser. I know as far as my sins are concerned, he has, a, he has a divine eraser. He has blotted out my transgressions, but he also speaks of blotting people out of the book of life. And when you blot something out, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't register anymore. And I think that there's probably something to be said about that particular passage when it comes to how we are able to forget and how we are able to have those memories replaced. Uh, uh, we, are, we are transformed in our, our minds and our hearts and our souls, and God replaces those bad things, those painful things, with things that we cannot possibly understand or comprehend. In fact, the greatest Christian ever, who ever lived was told not to speak of those things because he would do them injustice. So how will we be happy if our loved ones are not there? I don't ex 
specifically know what God is going to do, but I know he has guaranteed that we won't have any sorrow, we won't have any pain, we won't have any tears. That's a promise that he's made to us. And in faith, we put our, our trust in that promise that God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. I hope this helps. Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of this video series. Ask Dr. Betters is not meant to be a substitute for professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional counseling if needed.